Morning San Antonio starts right now. Signs of progress in ongoing debt ceiling talks, but could a potential deal face resistance on Capitol Hill? I'm ABC's Justin Finch with more from Washington. And let's look out there with live cam. A lot more humid this morning at 71 degrees, uh, but we are looking to see some showers over the weekend. We're going to be checking in with Mike right now. Good morning. Well, in a second. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is May 19th. Happy Friday. Yes. Happy Friday to you. Um, the week went by uh, kind of quick because of Wednesday's excitement, but um, ready for the weekend still. All right. So let's get through Friday and let's talk about the weekend. Of course, a lot of us make plans outdoors this time of year and Mike Ostrage is right there with more on what could happen overall first of all overall weekend I think great okay. yeah if you have outdoor plans I would not change them at all there will be one or two showers around there now as far as the we're talking about potential severe storms that's not going to be until late late tonight so all of Friday is going to be pretty nice but like Steph said it is a bit more humid out there we do have more clouds starting off as of right now and uh, some fog Kerrville already two and a half miles visibility so once again Gonna have to watch out for that with all the moisture in the ground around here. 72 degrees here in town, upper 60s in portions of the hill country. You know, the past couple of mornings we've been down right a couple of degrees within or below normal. Now we're on the warmer side, and also these numbers, dew points, measure moisture have gone up compared to where we were at this time yesterday. Because yesterday we were hovering around like upper 50s in the hill country, 62, 63 degrees, which wasn't bad. Yeah, you feel it when you step outside. It will definitely be something you uh, notice. This morning, we are going to have a lot of clouds hanging around here. Again, a patch or two of fog. Where there's fog, maybe a little bit of mist, but otherwise, uh, it's going to be dry this morning. And then after the school later on today, 90 high temperature, mostly sunny skies. Those storms won't come in until late tonight, basically an overnight uh, event that's going to be going on. There is the chance that some of those could be on the strong, potentially severe side. We'll go through some of the, the risks coming up a little bit later on, but again, this will be late tonight and early, early tomorrow. Then after that, just going to be a few of them around here. So like I said, overall, the weekend looks pretty good and temperatures. I think you're going to like those if you don't like 90s. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. We look forward to that. A postal worker is accused of going on a spending spree with stolen bank cards. Now Jessica Rubio faces felony charges for credit or debit card abuse against the elderly. San Antonio police say the victim was an elderly woman who lived along Rubio's mail route. And right now the USPS Office of Inspector General confirms it is investigating what happened. Now if it charges Rubio with mail theft, that would be a federal crime. The city of Seguin is trying to use every tool it can to fight the rising property crime trend plaguing cities across the area. They're asking businesses and homeowners with security cameras to voluntarily register them with police. The internal map or list would be used by police to speed up investigations. Other cities like Leon Valley, New Braunfels and Castle Hills also have the voluntary registry. Police Chief Jason Brady says it's not mandatory for people on the list to hand over any video. It's not just video, it's, it's it, the video may lead us to look in a certain area or uh, know about a certain more uh, precisely time of day and then we can kind of narrow in and tailor our investigation to, to sort of uh, ferret out those leads that would be productive. Now business owners we spoke with said they'd be willing to register police, register with police if it would keep property crimes down. And let's take a live look at the nation's capital this morning. President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy are signaling they're finding common ground in debt ceiling negotiations. Their headway comes just 13 days away from a possible default on June 1st. As high level talks continue, there are signs their deal could face hurdles in Congress. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, some lawmakers are now threatening to stonewall any potential deal unless their demands are met. President Biden keeping tabs on debt ceiling talks all the way from the G7 summit in Japan. I'm confident that we'll get the agreement on the budget that America will not default. The White House going on to say President Biden directed his team to continue pressing forward for a bipartisan agreement. And he remains confident that Congress will take necessary action to avoid default. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy also sounding more upbeat. Where we were a week ago and where we are today is a much better place. But on Capitol Hill, concerns that that progress could hit another roadblock. 
The Republican House Freedom Caucus now wants debt ceiling talks suspended until the Senate passes the GOP-passed House Debt Ceiling Bill. That legislation calls for nearly $5 trillion in spending cuts before raising the debt ceiling. We've made good progress this week, but the work continues. No one will get everything they want. In the Senate, some in the president's own party are pressuring him to invoke the 14th Amendment to raise the debt ceiling without congressional approval. I have confidence uh, and faith in the president in these negotiations, but I do not have faith in Speaker McCarthy and right-wing Republican House members. The president says he's considered the 14th Amendment option, but knows it could invite a slew of legal challenges. While the country would still have no agreed upon means to guarantee all of its debts are being paid. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. More than 90 firefighters responded to the scene of a massive fire at a construction site in Charlotte, North Carolina. They braved devastating conditions yesterday to rescue workers who were caught in that massive fire. Now, crews rescued about 15 construction workers from the fire, including one person who was stuck on top of a crane. Workers tried to contain the flames, but the partially completed apartment complex was quickly engulfed, forcing nearly 100 workers to run for safety. The cause of that fire is currently under investigation. U.S. Supreme Court hands Internet and social media companies a pair of victories. It left legal protections for them unscathed and refused to clear a path for victims of attacks by militant groups to sue these businesses under an anti-terrorism law. The justices and a case involving YouTube sidestep making a ruling on a bid to weaken a federal law called Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. It safeguards Internet companies from lawsuits for content posted by its users. And time now is 437 and 71 degrees for now. Victor Wembeyama is most likely getting ready to bring his many basketball talents to San Antonio. Up next, what he's expected to learn from the experience of head coach Greg Popovich. We are excited about that. And let's look out there with the roads with Trans Guide. Loop 1604 at Petranco Road. We see flashing lights over there. Uh, Steven Cavazos is in the building, and we're going to be checking in with him in the next half hour. And he said it is a rollover accident, 1604, going southbound at Petrenko. 437, and looking outside with live cam, we do have some morning clouds. We'll be right back. Tuesday night, Victor Wimbeyama played his final regular season game in France, then watched the draft lottery here in the U.S. It was live 2 in the morning in Paris time. Now he'll bring his talents to the NBA and most likely will suit up for the Spurs, which means he gets to learn from Greg Popovich. Coaches are teachers, and we've been fortunate as an organization to have one of the greatest teachers, regardless of sport, um, of all time. And to have the opportunity, we all learn from him each and every day. And for all of our players, that's an incredible opportunity. Um, and I know they don't take it for granted. And whoever we select will take full advantage of that as well. The draft. The NBA draft is Thursday, June 22nd in Brooklyn, New York. Now to Jordanton High School for the UIL Class 4A Softball Regional Semifinals. Bernie playing Alice in a one-game playoff. Greyhounds take control of this one early. Bottom of the third, one of Heidi Maidum drops a base hit into left. Taylor Wilson scores. Maidum has all three RBIs so far as the Greyhounds lead 3-0. Bottom of the sixth now. Bernie now up 4-2. Ava Nieto smokes one into the gap in left center. It hits the wall. Two-run score, part of a three-run inning. Greyhounds lead 7-2 heading to the Senate, a seventh rather, and pitcher Ava Rodriguez slams the door shut with a strikeout. She goes the distance as Bernie advances to the regional final with a 7-2 victory. I am so excited. I, just my senior year, I want to end big. It feels amazing because we did that our sophomore year and last year we came up short, but I am excited to get to continue that with my team. Bernie will face either Needville or Cal Allen in the regional final next week. I think no matter what position I'm, I'm in going into tomorrow, I'd be grinding it out. This is one of those places where that's what you have to do. You just try and stay in position, make the important par putts, and just keep the momentum going. And I did a good job of that today. And going into tomorrow, I'll just try and do more of the same. World number two, Scotty Scheffler fired his first career bogey free round in a major yesterday during the opening round of the PAGA Championship at Oak Hill Country Club in Rochester, New York. Carter a three under 67 as he seeks his second major. 
Now check out Kenny Pigman on 18 in the tee box. Dude gets hit right on his right shoulder by an errant shot. He ducked because four was yelled. Turns out that stuff does work. <laughs> All right, check out the first round leaderboard, which was suspended due to darkness. Eric Cole leads at five under through 14 holes. He's ranked 122 in the world. Bryson DeChambeau shot a 467. Scheffler tied for third with two others, including uh, champ Corey Connors at three under par. I love reading about golf, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's a little tricky on your brain trying to read it at 4.43 oh, in the morning. Yeah, no, you <laughs> you did very well. I got it today. You got it today. Time now, 4.43 and 71 degrees for now. Details about a rare brain disease that makes basic things difficult. Hear one woman's experience with a disease next. And up next, a woman is killed by a drunk driver right after a wedding reception. Up next, her husband breaking his silence on the tragic night in an exclusive interview. And welcome back. It is 446. A husband whose wife was killed by a drunk driver after their wedding reception is breaking his silence on that tragic night in an exclusive interview. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. Is there anything you'd say to the driver? It was an unthinkable tragedy on their wedding night three weeks ago. An allegedly drunk driver crashing into them as they left their reception. And this morning, for the first time since losing his wife, Sam, the groom, Eric Hutchinson, is telling his story to GMA. She was so happy. I mean, planning the wedding is extremely stressful. And she just had a weird, like, calmness. You guys were having a happy night. Yeah, we were. Through the wedding and the reception. One of the best nights of your life. It was. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more of this emotional interview, his powerful message, and how Eric Hutchinson wants the world to remember his bride. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. Imagine me totally fine one day, then the next you're having hallucinations, seizures, memory loss, and even trouble talking. It's called brain on fire disease, and researchers in Texas are looking for patients to test a drug. Ursula Perry shows us the journey of one young woman who experienced this rare and mysterious illness. Hunting, mountain biking, horseback riding, you name it, Katie Miller would do it, until she could not. Katie said, uh, Mom, I feel like my brain snapped. Local doctors admitted Katie into a psychiatric ward, but what was happening to her was not mental, it was physical. Oh, yeah. You're perfectly normal one day, and uh, suddenly overnight, um, this person can become paranoid. Anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis, also known as brain on fire disease, is misdiagnosed as a psychiatric disorder in up to 40% of patients. Many of the females, especially after puberty, they can develop what's called an ovarian dermoid cysts or an ovarian teratoma. These cysts often have hair and teeth in them. The immune system sees it as foreign and attacks it. But in these cysts, there is a component of tissue that really is brain tissue. Within four days, Katie was catatonic. She needed a ventilator to breathe. There's no single approved treatment. That's why a five-year clinical trial is testing whether a drug will stop the assault on the brain. Katie had her sister move, but she can't remember three months of her life. Now with various medications, she's on her way to recovery. Up to 50% of patients suffer long-term consequences, some of them suffering mood swings and cognitive issues and even long hospital stays. It can take years to recover. If you'd like to take part in this drug study, it's called the Extinguished Trial. There are 26 sites throughout the United States. The closest one to San Antonio is at University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. Let's look out there with Transguide again. Uh, Stephen was telling us this is a rollover at Loop 1604 and Petranco Road, and we're going to get the very latest for him very soon. Mm -hmm. Yep, southbound uh, 1604 out there. Plenty of lights out there. I can't. Yeah. You, you can see it better than I can, guys. Actually, Whatever it is, it's a mess. Yeah, yeah it's a right lot now. of a lot of flashing lights. So okay, so storms this weekend, but it's a pretty narrow window, right? Tonight, yeah. Tonight. You know that that's the thing. The overall weekend, I don't think it's going to be bad at all. Yes, there will be a couple of showers here and there. If you have outdoor plans, I wouldn't change it at all. We're talking, you know, 30, 20 percent. As a matter of fact, here's what it looks like in graphic form. 
Uh -huh. yeah. Now, uh -huh. tomorrow morning, that's when, and overnight is when we're going to have some of those storms. But the rest of the day is just going to be, you know, one or two of them here or there, and Sunday even fewer. Plus, look at the temperatures. We're going to be averaging low 80s for high temperatures, as opposed to yesterday it was 88, today going to be 90. So here's what's going on tonight. So throughout the rest of today, Fantastic. We got clouds this morning, but then plenty of sunshine throughout the day. And here comes that front, which is going to be moving on in here. But by nine o'clock, I mean, some of these storms are just entering the uh, the hill country. And then at midnight tomorrow morning, uh, they start continuing to move on through here. More are going to be developing. And again, this is basically going to be an early morning, an overnight early morning event as these move on through here. And then by uh, nine o'clock in the morning and and by noon, a lot of those things are completely gone. Then just a couple of them popping up here and there throughout the day. Now there is the chance some of those could become strong, potentially severe, primarily in the hill country, and it's going to be the high winds and hail that we're looking at the most. Now a decent downpour, ground is pretty well saturated. Yeah, you might have a problem with that, but again, it's going to be the, the high winds and hail, which are the things we uh, are going to be watching out for the most with that. All right, this was a beautiful sunset yesterday. It looks like fire in the sky there. Great look, and I love the, uh, the pergola there and uh, grill outside. Beautiful. All right, we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. We also have a little bit of fog. Well, I just made a liar out of me. There was two and a half miles visibility. Uh, let's see, what was that? 20 minutes ago, and now it's gone to up to 10 miles. So that's what we're going to be dealing with, though, this morning. It can get foggy. It can then clear out very easily. Temperatures will hold pretty steady, and we are going to make it uh, up to the low 80s and mid-80s by noon, and then 80, 89 at 3 o'clock, 90 high temperature today. Plenty of sunshine around here, and enough humidity to where you're going to realize or you're going to notice it, I should say. But look at that temperatures then going into next week stay at or slightly below normal. So the forecast goes like this around here today. Once again, 90 that front's going to move through later on tonight. Then we are going to have lower temperatures the next couple of days, showers and thunderstorms late, late tonight, and then pretty much just in the overnight hours right up just past sunrise tomorrow, one or two of them throughout the day, one or two on Sunday, maybe, and then fairly pleasant going into next week. We'll enjoy those pleasant temperatures because. Yeah, especially this weekend. I mean, that, that looks really nice. That sounds good. Thank you, Mike. Time right now, 452, 71 degrees. Up next, a look at the red carpet premiere of the upcoming Indiana Jones sequel, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. About 5 till 5, a new Indiana Jones movie gets the red carpet debut at Cannes, plus Fast X is expected to win the box office. The well, latest on what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Harrison Ford and friends on the red carpet at Cannes, debuting the upcoming Indiana Jones sequel, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It's the 80-year-old actor's last time holding the whip and the first indie film not directed by Steven Spielberg. E.B. Waller-Bridge also stars. The movie hits theaters June 30th. It's produced by Disney, the parent company of ABC News. In theaters this weekend, it's another sequel, Fast 10, the latest in the Fast and Furious franchise. It takes place all around the world, including a spectacular stop in Rome. And star Vin Diesel says last weekend's world premiere was the first premiere ever held at Rome's Coliseum. It's not a testament to the movie. That's a testament to the love that our fans have shown us for almost a quarter of a century. Fast 10 is expected to top the box office worldwide this weekend. The truth doesn't go anywhere just because you cover it up. New today on the small screen, the FX docuseries The Secrets of Hillsong explores the scandals of the megachurch. Two episodes air tonight, then drop tomorrow on Hulu. You're joking, right? 500,000 for one day of hope. And premiering today on Hulu, the remake of the 90s comedy White Men Can't Jump, this time starring Jack Harlow and Cinque Walls. And happy birthday to Sam Smith. The Oscar and Grammy winning singer is 31 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now is 457 and 71 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, hear from San Antonio police officers who took the stand in a bond hearing for a man accused of shooting his ex-wife and stabbing his two children, one of whom died. 
Plus, we're going to show you the first screenless laptop and how it works. That's ahead in Tech Bytes. Head on GMSA at 6, the road to graduation. Almost here for our local family after a 20-year wait for a diploma. Why the graduate won't be there for this weekend's ceremony. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide. Earlier we had that rollover at 1604 Petranco Road. Can't see anything on this shot, but we're going to get a check back with our Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A San Antonio man accused of shooting his ex-wife and stabbing his two kids just ahead. SAPD officers take the stand to share their view of what happened. And police have released ring doorbell video of the mass shooting in New Mexico that left three women dead. Up next, what it reveals about the shooter so far. Outside with Live Cam, we've had some hot afternoons this week. Mike says we've got a pretty good weekend on tap overall. We'll talk to him coming up in just about a minute. And good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is May 19th. Happy Friday. We made it to the end of the weekend. It hasn't been too bad, but yeah, I got a little warm yesterday afternoon. Overall, last couple of days have been rain free around here. Mike Ostrich joins us now with a look ahead to our Friday and our weekend. Good morning, everybody. And that trend is going to continue today. Rain's not going to move in until late, late tonight. So we're going to have another uh, mostly sunny and pretty hot day. If you thought it was hot yesterday, Steph, it's going to be every bit as hot and even hotter later on today. We're at 72 degrees now. It is warmer this morning because yesterday, you know, we were dipping down in into the mid 60s and even upper 50s in parts of the hill country. Well, one of the reasons why we're not as low this morning is because look at that bottom number dew points up to 68 degrees. We do have a lot of clouds out there. 90 high temperature today, so we're going to be three degrees above normal and still have some of this humidity left around here. The aquifer continues its trend upward. OK, one tenth of a foot. We'll take that, though. It's going in the right direction. Molds on the high side. Grass is low from yesterday's count. Of course, the updated reading is going to come out a little bit later on this morning. We do have some fog or excuse me, had some fog. There was a lot of it around uh, Kerrville just say an hour ago or 45 minutes ago. Gonzalez at seven miles visibility. We're going to keep watching this because we're going to start to see a couple of these patches, you know, try and develop as the morning rolls on, as has been the case the past couple of days. So mostly sunny today. We make it up to 90. Then tonight, we start to see the showers and thunderstorms develop late tonight. Basically, it's going to be an overnight rain event or heavy rain event, and that's going to be the situation in through the early morning hours tomorrow, right up through about sunrise just after that. Then beyond that, a couple of showers, uh, thunderstorms scattered about the area and just sort of few and far between and cooler temperatures. We're going to be down close to 10 degrees on average over the weekend as far as high temperatures are concerned. Sunday, you know, one or two showers here or there, not a rain out by any means over the weekend and still those uh, those lower temperatures around here. Now we do have the threat for severe weather late, late tonight, early tomorrow morning, and most of this is going to be from say 35 up in toward the hill country. If at all, that's the, the greatest threat, which is a two on a scale of one to five. All right, we'll talk about the uh, specifics of the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. And will this trend for some rain off and on continue into next week? Details in just a few moments. Traffic Authority, Stephen, got all those flashing lights out there. What's going on? Hey, guess what, Mike? That's already cleared out. So great news as we have entered our 5 a.m. hour. Let's get a quick look around town before we show you what was taking place at Petrenko because it's been pretty quiet for the most part on a lot of these trans guide cameras. You see it there at 281 at Hildebrand. North and southbound lanes are very quiet, but maybe getting a little bit busier there at 90 West at Zazamora. But as I mentioned, lots of quiet roadways, but we did have that one rollover crash. There were plenty of flashing lights out there, as you saw earlier, but uh, looks like that rollover crash has cleared out. So the southbound lanes near SeaWorld uh, has, again, uh, cleared out plenty of green on the screen, so that's better news to report. But let's hope everyone was doing okay out there because there was a very heavy first responder presence. So we'll watch that area very closely as the morning commute does get going here. But if you plan on hitting the roads and heading into the Alamo City this early in the morning, it should be a pleasant drive along I-37 northbound from Pleasanton. 29 minutes is what you can expect at this hour. It's a perfect time to head in from Castroville, and that's because it's a 30 minute drive time in the eastbound lanes of US 90 and the arrival from Idle looks to be good as well. About 17 minutes along I 35 northbound. But let's get one last look around town. There's 37 at Fair Avenue, uh, maybe one or two vehicles out there this early in the morning. Nothing's really going to slow you down this at this point, folks, but we're going to keep a close eye on things and we do have some road closures in place. We'll have more on that coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Mark Seth.
Thank you, sir. New this morning, a man driving down Roland Avenue discovered a victim lying in the street this morning on the southeast side next to a damaged bicycle. According to San Antonio Police, this happened on Roland near Pecan Valley. The man driving saw the damaged bike and a man lying in the street. Police said the man is a victim of a hit and run. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The 2022-2023 school year ends today for Sabinal ISD. The district announced its plans earlier this week to end the school year a full week early. In a letter posted to the district's website, the superintendent says the decision is, quote, due to increased anxiety approaching the one-year mark of the shooting at Robb Elementary. Now, there's no doubt the shooting on May 24, 2022 has deeply affected Uvalde, the surrounding communities, and beyond. We hope you will join us next week as we look back on the past year with families, survivors, and residents during our special one year in Uvalde. The In-Death Report airs this Wednesday, May 24th at 9 p.m. here on KSAT 12. And ABC News is airing their own report as well, but that one's running tonight at 8 p.m. on 2020 right here on KSAT 12. Gut-wrenching testimony as officers took the stand in a bond hearing of a man accused of shooting his ex-wife and stabbing his two children, one of whom died. Stephen Clare is charged with capital murder and two counts of aggravated assault. The first officers who got to the crime scene told a courtroom yesterday what they saw. Officer Veronica Butler said she found the mother, Maria Clare, outside, or rather Mariah Clare, outside the home in a pool of blood. I really thought she was going to die in my arms. I applied pressure to help her, and I spoke to her to keep her breathing, just to let her know that she's not alone. Other officers also told the court what they saw. The hearing was about Claire's bond. Prosecutors want to revoke it, but his attorneys want it lowered. Right now, it's set at $3.5 million. It's unclear when the judge will make a decision. Now to new video showing the frantic moments as officers confront a mass shooter in the state of New Mexico. It comes as we learn more about the three victims and a warning some of the images may be disturbing. As ABC's Rihanna and Alley reports, at least six other people were wounded in the shootings and police have not revealed a motive. This morning, new details about the mass shooting in New Mexico that left three women dead. Authorities releasing this ring doorbell video of the moment 18-year-old Bo Wilson began firing at random in his neighborhood. Clad in a homemade bulletproof vest, Wilson then leaves his house to continue his rampage, firing more than 100 rounds towards seven houses and 11 cars. Wilson seemingly begins taunting police, calling out, Come kill me as he paces in a church parking lot. It's emotional to watch it, honestly, and I've seen it a bunch of times now and talked about it even more. It's still emotional to watch it. Police body cam video shows the carnage and chaos that unfolds once officers arrive. Our shots are being fired. Two officers were hit in the gunfire. I'm shot. Including Sergeant Rachel Desenza, who is now recovering at home. Moments later, Wilson is killed. Sergeant's down! Sergeant's is down! Police say Wilson had taken off his bulletproof vest before the shootout and had a handwritten note in his pocket. I'm very heartsick over over this happening, but on the other hand, I'm just so proud of our officers and our department. It comes as we learn more about the three victims killed, Shirley Voida, Melody Ivy, and Gwendolyn Schofield, all grandmothers. Gwendolyn and Melody, mother and daughter, were both teachers. The pair were driving together when they were shot. And Shirley was a school nurse. Her family saying she was joyfully devoted to her family, friends, church, and community. Rhiannon and Alley, ABC News, New York. 508, 71 degrees. And it wasn't the baby back ribs that brought health inspectors back to this Chili's Grill and Bar. What they found behind the kitchen door that required a reinspection. It's the world's first screenless laptop. Just ahead, how it's able to project your workspace right in front of you. Yeah, let's look out there with a live pan starting off at a humid 71 degrees. Uh, we're looking forward to a nice weekend overall. We're going to get all those details with Mike later on. Welcome back. A Southside Mexican restaurant got a failing score when health inspectors visited last month. And now that business has a new name and new owners. Tim Gerber talked to the new owner to find out what happened behind the kitchen door.
Mario's restaurant in the 1300 block of Pleasanton Road saw its previous score of 94 tumble all the way below failing, getting a 67 on their April inspection. Cooked meat was improperly cooled, a jar of mayonnaise was left sitting on a shelf, while several other foods were also sitting out waiting to be prepped. It should all be kept cold. Avocados found under raw chicken were discarded. The microwaves and cold holds were dirty, and the inspector watched a worker touch their face, who then proceeded to handle food. Another big problem, the business had been operating without a valid permit since last year. I stopped by this week to see if they've made corrections. Can I talk to somebody about your recent inspection? Co-owner Valeria Santos had a pretty good explanation for the failing score. We changed the name. Okay. That was before us. Santos said she recently bought the business with her mother, who was a cook for Claudia's. She said the inspection occurred before they took over. This is us. But we're waiting for inspector to come on for us. Santos showed me they have all the required permits in the new name, Lindsay's Cafe. They're still waiting for their first health inspection and are in the process of changing the name on the business. <laughs> Las Minas Cafe in the 3800 block of Blanco Road earned a 75 and another inspection after racking up several violations. Cooling units for food and drinks were too warm. Dishes used to plate food still had water on them. Employees were touching ready-to-eat foods with bare hands. Raid bottles in the kitchen needed to be removed and so did all the stuff blocking a hand-washing sink. They were also storing several utensils in a pitcher of water at room temp. It needs to be 135 or higher. The inspector left a long list of items to be corrected for the reinspection. The Chili's at 131 Southwest Loop 410 got an 82. They were improperly using ice to cool off cooked sausage. There was a black mold-like buildup in the ice machine. An employee used bare hands to put bacon on a burger that was served to a customer. Other workers weren't wearing hats and hairnets. The inspector also noted the entire place was in need of a deep cleaning, especially the kitchen, to remove dirt and food residue. A reinspection was ordered. For BKD, I'm Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. And to find more behind the kitchen door, go under the news tab on KSAT.com. Right now, 515, 71 degrees. And coming up next, how OpenAI just made it easier for iPhone users to use chat GPT. And looking right now at uh, some vehicles on the shoulder, 281 near Jones Maltzberger. We'll talk to Stephen coming up in a matter of minutes. Your record label is taking off, but so is your sound engineer. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. Your day with nature me the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand trying vapes to quit smoking might feel like progress but with three times more nicotine than a pack of cigarettes vapes increase cravings trapping you in an endless craving loop nicorette reduces cravings until they're gone for good it's hard to run a business on your own Make it easier on yourself. With Shopify, you can have everything you need to streamline your shipping, returns, and product storage so you can focus on growing your business. Start your journey with a free trial today. Friday morning, 518. Yes, happy Friday. And happy Friday, yes. We look forward to checking the weekend forecast with you in just a minute. But first, um, well, not too bad on the road. Not too bad. We were just talking about our uh, time working and selling lawnmower parts uh, which, during the commercial break. Which brings it up. <laughs> I, I cut my grass yesterday. Do it today just uh, before you yeah. get rain tomorrow morning because, you know, it may not have a chance to dry out. So, yeah, it's going to be hot. Yeah. yeah, well, thankfully, that's helped out the roads. You know, that's dry roads this morning. So folks really don't have to worry about that here in town. Let's get a quick look and see what we can expect for the Friday morning commute. Thankfully, it is quiet, but there is that uh, looks like a stalled 
18 wheeler box trailer out there, not really causing an impact with traffic. We showed you this as we went to commercial break. Uh, you can see there's another vehicle right behind it. So watch out. This is off on the access road shoulder lane. We'll have to find out which direction this is in, but again, not impacting the main lanes of traffic. We started our morning off with some problems there along 1604 near Petrenko, a rollover crash that was reported, but it looks like that's already cleared out. So that's better news to report. Now the big talking point will be a lot of the construction, and if you've driven along 281, you know this work is going to take place. This asphalt work will wrap up tomorrow's or pardon me Sunday, May 21st. This work starts around 9 in the morning, should wrap around 3 in the afternoon. Alternating lane closures along the frontage road in both directions right there at Overlook Parkway. But back here at 281 at Jones Maltzberger, we'll keep a close eye on this. I actually drove down 281 yesterday. There is a lot of that construction, so tricky to navigate sometimes, Mike. Ah, the place a lot of construction around there. Thank you very much, sir. All right, yesterday was absolutely gorgeous out there. Um, when I was cutting my grass, it wasn't that bad. If you're doing it today, we will have more humidity. We've got more humidity out there as well this morning, but some of those beautiful wildflowers there in the park, so pretty. All right, we're starting off with a lot of clouds around here this morning, as opposed to having all those clear skies at this time yesterday. Now, went from 10 miles back down to four miles visibility over there at Kerrville, seven Gonzales, nothing in the metropolitan area, but again, just gotta be on the lookout for a couple of patches of fog popping up here and there throughout the next few hours. Temperatures won't move all that much because of some of the humidity. We may drop a couple of degrees. We are in the upper 60s, low 70s right now. More sunshine later on today. Already low to mid 80s at noon. We're going to top off at 90 and yeah, a bit more humidity. So you will feel that 90 more than uh, yesterday's 88 for high temperature. All right. As far as rain chances, yes, we will have some of those potentially strong storms, but they're not going to be coming in here until late tonight. So this computer model, I mean, this is already at 930 tonight where we just have a couple of clouds around here. So all during the day and most all of the evening, everything is going to be fine if you are heading out this evening. But some of those storms will start to work their way in here then in the late night and overnight hours and then continue to develop as we go into the wee hours tomorrow morning. And then right around sunrise and just after that, yes, there will be a couple of pockets of some well, a couple of heavier downpours can't be ruled out. And of course, with the ground pretty saturated, you're going to have to watch out for any of the, the low lying areas to uh, perhaps flood over somewhat. But those will continue to work their way on out of here. And then by the afternoon, I mean, not bad at all. We'll still keep a fair amount of clouds around here. One or two of the uh, stray leftover showers here and there, but the, the brunt of everything is going to be in the overnight hours early tomorrow morning. Some of those storms will become severe or at least the possibility of it. This is a, a one on the scale of one to five. This would be a two with the scattered high winds. Hail are going to be the biggest threats with this. Now, after we get past today or tonight, I should say with those potentially strong storms, this is into the early morning hours tomorrow, 30% throughout the day tomorrow and then going into Sunday. Just one or two here and there, 20%. And after that, even going into the first part of next week, perhaps by Tuesday, a stray shower, perhaps by Thursday. So rain chances overall appear to be sort of uh, sort of waning a little bit as we go on into next week. Temperatures, though, are still going to be pretty good, as you can see right here with uh, at or below normal readings for high temperatures. Matter of fact, well below normal this weekend. The front will come through tonight. We do hit a high today of 90. 82 tomorrow, the storms overnight early tomorrow morning, then just, you know, one or two here and there scattered about. If you have outdoor plans this weekend, I would not change them at all. And temperatures will finally come back up to normal readings by the middle of next week. Looks good overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Nice weekend with those lower temperatures. And can you believe Memorial Day weekend's already coming up next week? That got here quick. Yeah. Yes, it did. Thank you, Mike. Time check, 523, 71 degrees on your Friday. Up next, Apple is showing off its new multi-view feature for live sports for Apple TV 4K. But here are a look at your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, six, four, five, Fireball seven, Daily four, one, four, five, seven, Fireball two. Cash five, eight, 19, 23, 26, 30. And your Texas two-step, three, six, 13, 28, bonus ball seven. 
today's Tech Bytes, a chat bot surprise. OpenAI has launched a chat GPT app for Apple users. It's free to download from the App Store right now. And now that the app has rolled out in the U.S., OpenAI says it will expand to other countries in the coming weeks. An Android version is also expected soon. There's a new Apple TV feature for sports fans. Users can now watch as many as four live streams of Major League Soccer or Friday Night Baseball with the Apple TV 4K. The option was previously limited to third-party services such as Fubo TV or YouTube TV. And get ready to ditch your ordinary laptop. There's a new device in town called a Space Top. Space Top ditches a physical screen for augmented reality. Users wear special glasses that create a 100-inch virtual screen. The first batch of Space Tops will be limited to just 1,000 units. Computer with no screen. Now there's something to monitor. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. That Five, was funny. Not bad. 527, <laughs> 71 degrees. And Chick-fil-A's first ever restaurant is closing down this weekend. We're going to tell you why. And a chilling thought for Starbucks customers. The company is changing its ice. What this means for your favorite summer drinks. And ahead on GMSA at 6, a new sauce program could help you get water-saving plants for the yard. Our Sarah Costa explains how it works just in time for the summer heat. President Biden more than 7,000 miles away from Washington as the debt ceiling crisis is still hovering around him. We haven't agreed to anything yet, but I, I see the path that we could come to an agreement. And uh, I think we have a structure now. And Why some like Senator Bernie Sanders are still wanting the president to use the 14th Amendment if necessary. Let's look out there with live cam. Prepare for the humidity this morning. It's happening and it's 71 degrees, uh, but we're looking forward to kind of a nice weekend. Happy Friday, everybody. It is May 19th. Yes, happy Friday. Um, we're, I'm excited it's Friday, mm. but we were just talking like how quickly, I mean, May 19th, yeah. how quickly this month is going. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, it was just fiesta yeah. yesterday. Yeah, it seems yeah. like it was just yesterday. <laughs> and now school is ending for a lot of kids as right. we go on in the next couple of weeks. And it's going at light speed. I already bought you guys fireworks. Oh, yeah, nice. the Fourth of oh, July. I'm good with sparklers. <laughs> I'm with sparklers. sparklers. <laughs> I mean, think about it. That's going to be you know Fourth of July is going to yeah. be here before you know yeah. it. Do not true. say what you're thinking. A hot oh. dog. That, don't do it. A hot dog. No. no. Oh, because I think of that. It's, after four talk at oh. the oh. show. Talk. <laughs> Christmas no countdown 2023. Go. We are starting off <laughs> this morning. Don't. Hey, Mark. Yes. You can't do that in the month of May. Can't do what in the month of May? <laughs> what you are What you just about. did? We, I, I'll take it around. I wasn't morning. thinking about it. You probably. And, <laughs> and yeah, like Steph, had, Steph said, the humidity is definitely uh, back somewhat this morning. Not ridiculously high humidity, but enough to where you're going to notice it with these dew points, which yesterday we were down right around 62 or so with that number. Now it's up to 68, which means... Uh, yeah, you feel it more and uh, temperatures at 72 at this time yesterday. We were down in the mid 60s, actually a little bit below normal. We do have some fog forming up in Kerrville, a little bit around Gonzales elsewhere. It's pretty good, but just kind of watch it as the morning rolls on. Everybody is up a good what, five, six degrees on average compared to yesterday. As a matter of fact, about 10 degrees warmer in portions of the hill country because you folks are down in the upper 50s at this time yesterday and throughout the rest of today, 84 at noon. We have clouds around this morning and then plenty of sunshine later on today. 90 high temperature, three above normal, a little more humidity out there. So, yeah, you'll feel every bit of that 90 degrees. Now, we do have the chance for some stronger storms, but not till late tonight and in the overnight hours. Some of those may be on the uh, potentially severe side, high winds and hail being the uh, the biggest threat with that. And that's only going to be into tomorrow morning. We've that front moving through and a sneak peek at the weekend. Look at those high temperatures way, way down. Overall, good looking weekend. One or two showers. We'll get all the details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, no problem still? I'm sorry, still thinking about that hot dog for 4th of July, Mike. That sounds That's, great. That sounds great, yeah. But you know what? Uh, traffic's looking pretty great, but you want to watch out here, 281 at Jones Maltzberger, because we do have that stalled 18 wheeler out there. Looks like this is in the southbound lanes now. As we mentioned earlier, that it's not really impacting traffic because it's off on the shoulder lane. But uh, just still watch out. Make sure you check your vehicles before you get out on the roadway and watch out if you see those flashing lights. That's likely a Tech.Hero truck working to help 
a driver out. Uh, again, reported in the southbound lanes as you approach Jones Maltzberger Road. And as of right now, that's really the only issue that we're spotting here on the map. I did talk to our friends at Transguide a few moments ago, so things are looking A-OK -okay for at least right now. We're going to watch roads very closely, but if you're traveling into San Antonio, things should still be good for you here. Along I-10 westbound, we can expect about a 30-minute commute if you're traveling in from Seguin. 33 minutes along 87 northbound for our friends in Lavernia. And right now, uh, for our friends down in Floresville, should be about a 29-minute commute. So Friday morning, shaping off uh, to be a pretty good start, but you want to watch out anytime a situation like this is developing out on the roadways. You can already see the commute is getting maybe a tad bit busier there in the southbound lanes. I'll watch the roads closely and have more updates for you throughout the morning. Mark Steff. Thank you, sir. A man is dead after police say he was involved in a hit and run overnight. Alyssa Cole joins us live from the downtown area. And Alyssa, we understand this happened on the southeast side on Roland Avenue near Rigsby. Good morning, you all. Yes, it happened in that area, and we got a chance to drive through that area right before we became live just now. It is pretty dark and windy. It's um, just above a creek area and near a cemetery. Unfortunately, the incident happened just before 2 o'clock this morning. A driver was in the area. He spotted a mangled bike on that wind, windy road, and as he continued to drive throughout, of course, um, he saw a man who was also uh, hurt. He was injured, saw him in the middle of the road. Once police got there, EMS arrived. Of course, they pronounced the man dead on scene. Uh, police say the incident looks like it stemmed from an apparent hit and run. Right now, we don't have the identification of who that victim was and who hit him. Uh, if you have any information, of course, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That information is on our website at ksat.com. But for now, reporting in San Antonio, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, ma'am. Taking a live look at the nation's capital, we're at 635 in the morning while lawmakers deal with debt limit. President Biden is not in the nation's capital this morning. He's over in Japan where he'll try to convince other G7 leaders to take part in a shared approach toward China and Russia. But those efforts might be hindered or at least affected by the looming debt ceiling crisis in the U.S. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, President Biden has shortened his trip, planned for eight days by half, in order to get back to Washington ahead of June 1st. President Joe Biden in Hiroshima for the Group of Seven Summit is emphasizing the strong relationship between the U.S. and Japan. The bottom line, Mr. Prime Minister, is that uh, when our countries stand together, we stand stronger, and I believe the whole world is safer when we do. Among the key topics the leaders will discuss during the summit, the Kremlin's invasion of Ukraine. We stand up for the shared values, including supporting the brave people of Ukraine as they defend their sovereign territory and holding Russia accountable for its brutal aggression. While Biden is more than 7,000 miles away from the White House, he can't escape the looming debt ceiling crisis in Washington, D.C. We haven't agreed to anything yet, but I, I see the path that we could come to an agreement. And I, I think we have a structure now, and everybody's working hard. And I mean, we're working two or three times a day, then going back, getting more numbers. A group of Democratic senators say Biden should invoke the 14th Amendment, which forbids the U.S. from defaulting on its debts. The president has the authority to use the 14th Amendment, and he should be prepared to do that, period. While the House Freedom Caucus is calling on the Senate to pass the Limit Save Grow Act that raises the limit $1.5 trillion, but includes sizable cuts to some domestic programs. I'm John Lawrence reporting. A police chase in East Houston ended with the suspect and an officer crashing into two separate homes. Houston police say it happened around noon yesterday. So far, police have not said what charges the suspect is facing. One of the homeowners says she's grateful to be alive. The suspect's car crashed into her neighbor's home and the HPD cruiser slammed into her house and almost hit her. No one was seriously hurt. The vehicles have since been removed from the homes. Hyundai and Kia have reached a $200 million settlement over claims their cars are too easy to steal. So if you've heard about a popular social media challenge that inspired people to steal Hyundais and Kias, car thieves used USB cables to steal those vehicles. Now, the Highway Lost Data Institute says the vehicles lacked basic auto theft prevention technology. So car owners sued the car makers, and now that Kia and Hyundai settled, the companies also say they have developed software patches to better protect the vehicles. 
A California dermatologist has pleaded not guilty to accusations she tried to poison her husband. Records show 46-year-old you, uh, Emily you rather, entered her not guilty plea in court this week. Prosecutors say she was caught on camera putting liquid drain cleaner in her husband's lemonade. But her attorney claimed you was mixing Drano with lemonade to bait and kill ants in the kitchen. You is facing three felony counts of poisoning and one felony count of domestic battery with corporal injury. Time now is 539 and 71 degrees for now. All right, everybody, chill. Starbucks is changing its ice cubes. What this means for your favorite cold beverages going into the long summer season. Steph, are you going to be okay? Yeah, it should be good. Okay. We'll be okay. <laughs> and the pricey Star Wars themed hotel at Disney World is shutting down. Oh, wow. Oh, why Disney says it's closing and when it's taking its final voyage through a galaxy far, far away. I've seen videos about that place. It is super cool, but it's very, very, I mean, it's priced out for most families. Right, right. Uh, 539, as we take a look at this uh, beautiful skyline shot of down, downtown, including the Albo Dome, all lit up for the weekend. You're watching GMSA. In your morning consumer headlines, the very first Chick-fil-A is closing this weekend. The restaurant in Atlanta's Greenbrier Mall first opened back in 1967. It's considered a pioneer in mall dining, leading to the creation of the modern day food court. So Chick-fil-A has not given a reason why this location is slated to close for good tomorrow. Like many malls, Greenbrier has been struggling. It currently has no major anchor tenants. Meanwhile, Chick-fil-A has about 2,600 locations across the country. I remember when there were no standalone Chick-fil-A's and you could only find it yes. in a mall. Remember that? I remember that as well. All right, 542 Starbucks changing a key ingredient of their colder drinks. A coffee shop chain is changing ice cubes, replacing the current cubes with a smaller nugget ice for their drinks. Starbucks says the new ice is made with machines that use less water, and the company has a goal of cutting its water usage in half by the year 2030. Still, customers should know that the nuggets do not melt any faster, and baristas are using the same ice scoop, so customers should not expect less ice in their drinks. The small change is a big deal for the company since ice handcrafted beverages account for about 75% of all sales at Starbucks. The company will be rolling out the new ice to all of its stores over the next couple of years. Only 18 months after opening too much fanfare, the Star Wars Galactic Super Cruiser Hotel is preparing for its final voyage. The pricey hotel and immersive fan experience at Florida's Disney World will close its doors on September 28th. At nearly $6,000 per couple for two week nights, the price was out of reach for many Star Wars enth enthusiasts. From the beginning, critics panned the hotel for things like utilitarian bathrooms and a disappointing cosplay lightsaber experience. Some said the interaction fan experiences didn't live up to the expectations. Disney says the company is not giving up on immersive cutting edge experiences for the guests. You know what it sounds like to me? So Bob Iger ran Disney a long time, retired and then came back uh -huh. and he's cutting costs and making changes. This looks like it's probably got Bob Iger's fingerprints all over oh. it as far as, hey, that's not working. We're going to stop doing that. Yeah, well, that is expensive. No, very, very expensive. Yeah. 544, 71 degrees. The San Antonio Humane Society is up next with this precious pet that really wants to be adopted. And check your trans guide if you have to head out the door in the next uh, five or ten minutes. Traffic looks pretty good right now at Loop 410 and Babcock. And also that last shot, also 410 and McCullough. You're watching GMSA. Well, Kim has got another just itty oh, bitty. Just if you're watching last week, one. this is the sister of this the little. Is. This one looks even smaller. <laughs> this is even smaller. So this one's probably just right at two pounds. Another little chihuahua, <laughs> two oh, months old. Look at Not going to get much bigger than this um, at all. But um, yeah, so very sweet little puppy dog. Oh. Well, hey, by the way. <laughs> These little ones aren't going to camp, but no. <laughs> your kids can go to your camp. Your kids can go to camp, And for we've sure. got a goodie bag here of all sorts of stuff. Yeah, so, so we've got t-shirts. We've got great programs coming up. We've got two-day programs, week-long programs. So um, they can learn to be a trainer for the day. They mm -hmm. can learn to be a shelter helper. So what it takes to take care of Capri and her sweet little friends. I'm sorry, uh, Carolina Blue and her sweet little friends at the shelter. And learn to make enrichment toys yeah. like these. Yeah. So there's little treats in there. There are. And it's just a... Um, 
Yeah, paper so you give them tube. to exactly. It's a paper towel tube. Um, we also use toilet paper. So anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. But great programs. We also have a special. So 20% off. And um, you can sign up, and and we've got a 20% off promo code. So. What ages are the camps? So the ages are uh, second grade all the way through high school. Okay. Yeah. So come on. Come and on out. And they are week long? Week long or we have some two week ones. So if you're going on vacation and you're going to go like the first half of the week or the second half of the week, the two day programs are perfect for that. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Okay. And it goes all the way through the, the whole summer? All the way through the whole summer. So oh. it'll end um, early August and starts uh, first part of June. Okay, right when school lets out. Yeah. So don't forget to uh, sign up right now because um, those slots are going to be they will. going pretty quickly. So if you'd like more information about camp or the little, little Carolina, puppy, Blue. Carolina Blue, head on over to 4804 Fredericksburg Road. Easy for me to say, 226-7461 or the website, sahumane.org. Thank you, dear. Thank you. That when they're still that size yes. and they can snuggle in right there. So cute. Yeah. I, Mike, Mike has a nice job there. I love that. Absolutely. Something's just yeah. pos popped up on Transguide uh, I-10 area. Here's Stephen with uh, a look. Yeah, you know, it looks like this was May along the Axis Road. I actually talked to our friends at Transguide a few moments ago, so let's get a wider look. Uh, notice we actually have first responders, and it looks like someone else walking along the Axis Road there. So definitely be aware of what's out there, especially as the commute is getting going this morning, and it's still very dark outside. Flashing lights obviously taking over our Transguide camera there. No word yet on exactly how many vehicles are involved. Our friends at Transcat, our friends over there at Transcat, were just able to get us this particular picture. So we're going to watch it closely. It doesn't look like it's impacting the main lane, so that's the good news. But let's show you what the map looks like right now, because a lot of the that is being reported the activity, as you see along the Axis Road, eastbound lanes near Vince Jackson Road is where we see it reported. Watch out, as you saw, first responders were on the scene. Quick drive over here does show we still have that stalled vehicle at 281 Southbound at Jones Maltzberger. It's not really been causing any issues because that is also along the access road off on the shoulder lane. But just watch out because our morning commute has been uh, pretty quiet, but we did have some issues out there a little earlier this morning that have cleared out. Now some new problems are popping up here, so we're going to keep a close eye on things throughout the morning. But one last look here again, Vance Jackson. Uh, this is in the eastbound lanes could along the access road. We'll work to get some details, but if you can see it there, it looks like that may be another 18 wheeler that is on the access road as well. So we'll work to get those details confirmed for you. But right now, just watch out because you see some of those people actually walking along oh, yeah. the access road. Got to be safe. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Weekend's almost here. Yep. And going to be a fantastic weekend, I think. Uh, temperatures are going to be down. Yeah, there's going to be one or two showers out there, but mm -hmm. not really a, a big, big deal at all as far as rain is concerned. Tonight, different story. More on that in a moment. First of all, I want to take a look at the Climate Prediction Center. We've been watching this over the past a couple of months here because you know the overall weather pattern has changed now and and things have been leaning toward the wetter side as well as the cooler side this is going in middle of next week in toward uh, memorial day and about even odds of being normal precipitation so this doesn't mean it's going to be on the dry side anything like that but this is just what we would expect which is about a 10th a 15th of an inch of rain or a tenth and or about an eighth of an inch of rain per day on average. And as far as temperatures in that time period, odds are leaning toward slightly below normal readings. Right now, normal high temperature is 87 degrees. Once we get in toward Memorial Day, the average high temperature is approaching 90. All right, going into the first couple of days of June, again, just about even odds of seeing normal precipitation, not anything too much on the dry side, and leaning a little bit below normal. So still upper 80s, but not anything too extreme as far as uh, temperatures going into even the first part of June. All right, over the next few days, we have diminishing rain chances, 30% chance tomorrow. That's after the overnight storms and then just uh, one or two of them here and there. So looks like things are going to start to dry out a little bit. Temperatures also over the weekend drop down significantly. So we are going to be at or below normal going in through the middle part of next week and same thing 
anything with low temperatures are going to be staying at or slightly below normal. Just a little bit warm over the next uh, couple of days. Beautiful, beautiful sunset yesterday. We are starting off with some clouds as of right now and throughout the rest of the day. Clouds around maybe a patch or two of fog here or there. 84 at noon and again, it's going to be on the hot side today. 90 and you're going to feel every bit of that 90 degrees when you uh, step outside today because we do have a bit more in the way of humidity. We do have the front moving through tonight. Now this is going to touch off a couple of showers and some uh, thunderstorms. This is going to be late tonight and basically overnight early, early tomorrow morning. There will be a couple of them that are going to be on the strong, potentially severe side. High winds and hail being the biggest threats that will go through sunrise right after that. Then it's just going to be one or two scattered ones uh, throughout the day. Even lesser chance of rain on Sunday. Got outdoor plans. I would not change them all. Plus, we're going to have some great temperatures yeah. this weekend as well. We had a viewer right yesterday. Uh, my grand, uh, granddaughter's graduated from St. Mary's University Law School Saturday afternoon. Any rain in the day's forecast? Well, good news from Mike Ostrich, yes. Mary Ellen. Take an umbrella to be on the safe side, mm -hmm. but right. overall, odds are in your favor. And congratulations. Yes, congrats. Well, I find when I take an umbrella, it doesn't rain, so I'll just pack it. There you go. Yeah, good, Perfect. Good plan. luck. <laughs> 554, 71 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, six, four, five, fireball seven. Daily four, one, four, five, seven, fireball two. Cash five numbers eight, 19, 23, 26, 30. Texas two step, three, six, 13, 28, and a bonus ball of seven. Good morning, coming up here on a Friday GMA. Breaking news, Ukrainian President Zelensky is heading to Japan to join the G7 summit in person. This as President Biden negotiates with his team over the debt ceiling from Hiroshima. Speaker McCarthy now saying that he sees a path to a deal. And the other breaking news, a deadly workplace shooting in Ohio in what police are calling a target attack. We're gonna have the latest on those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA, the summer heat is almost here, but that doesn't mean your water bill has to go up. How Sauce is helping people pay for water-saving plants. Plus, as we celebrate our graduates this weekend, a family is celebrating a degree for one of their own, even though he won't be there. The remarkable story is still ahead. And checking Trans Guide, as we always are, monitoring the situation on the highways and byways of the Alamo City this morning. Flashing lights and an incident working right now. I-10 at Vance Jackson westbound is the title card on the screen right now from Trans Guide. We'll check back in with Stephen coming up.